Hi everyone, let us discuss this example. See in this example, we have to find the value of surface integral, okay? Double integration of f over s, where f is a scalar field and s is a given surface. So we are familiar with a definition of surface integral of scalar fields. So let us write the definition. So let me write, we know that or we have double integration of f over s is equal to double integration f of phi of uv. So here phi is a parameterization of surface s and that phi is defined on domain d. So we solve this double integration over that domain d, right? After that, there is norm phi u cross phi v du dv. So this is the definition we have for a uh, surface integral of scalar field, okay? So let us start with a given function. What have they given to us? Uh, f of x, y, z, let me write here. We have, we have f of x, y, z, which is x plus y plus z. This is a given function, okay? So after that, we will uh, consider the surface. What we have is, uh, let me mention is, is is the portion of plane. They have mentioned a plane here, x plus y is equal to one. So this plane we have, right? In the first octant only, in first octant, okay, in the first octant. And what have they mentioned for which uh, and zero less than or equal to z less than or equal to one. So let us find that plane so we can easily find its parameterization. See, x plus y is equal to one. Actually in xy plane, it represents a straight line, okay? So we have a x axis, y axis, so this is a xy plane. So x plus y is equal to one, it's a line in xy plane. If you put y is equal to zero, so the value of x is one, that means that line passes through this uh, z one, zero, zero, get it? And if you put x is equal to zero, the value of y will be one, so that line passes through zero, one, zero, get it? So this type of line we have in xy plane. But actually in R3, it represents a plane which passes through this line and which will be the parallel to the z axis, get it? So this type of plane we have. One more additional thing they are given, that is that plane, that plane should be in uh, first octant, okay? First octant, that means where x, y, and z, all of them are positive. And most important thing is z varies from zero to one. So the height of that plane will be, uh, it will start at zero at, uh, for z is equal to zero and it will end at one. So this kind of plane we will have, let me draw, okay? So this kind of plane we have, whose height is z is equal to one, height is one, get it? Starting at z is equal to zero, that means an xy plane, and it will end at the plane where uh, z is equal to one. So this kind of plane we have. So we have to find its parameterization. What is meaning of parameterization? We reduce the variables, get it? So initially, if you have three variables, we try to express the surface in, in terms of two variables. So that is parameterization. So let me find parameterization. So uh, parameterization, parameterization of S is, parameterization of S is, we will denote it by phi, okay? So uh, I'm expressing in terms of X and Z. So X, obviously X is here. At a place of Y, what will I do? We have this equation, X plus Y is equal to one. So with the help of that, we can write y is equal to one minus x. So it is possible to express y in terms of x. So I'm replacing y by one minus x and z I will keep as it is. It means we express in terms of two variables, x and z only. So now we have to write their limits, okay? We have to write the limits of x and limits of z. So no need to worry about z since they have clearly mentioned z varies from zero to one. So obviously the limits of z will be zero to one. So here you can see the x is varying from zero to one, right? So a limit of x will be zero to one. Since x is varying from, it will start at zero, it will end at one. So yes, limits also we have got. Okay, so we have space here, let us use. Okay, so let us go further. After that, we are interested to find partial derivative of phi with respect to x and with respect to z. Let us do that. So derivative of phi with respect to x. Derivative of x with respect to x, one, right? 
So here uh, derivative of 1 will be 0, derivative of x will be 1. So it will be minus 1. Z is a constant. We are differentiating with respect to x. So that's why z is constant, derivative will be 0. Let us find derivative of 5 with respect to z. Okay. There is no z constant, derivative will be 0. In second component also, there is no z, derivative will be 0. And z of derivative of z is 1. So let us find cross product now since we want cross product. 5x cross 5z. So you know well how to find cross product by solving this determinant. Okay. I, j, k. The first row will be this one, 1, minus 1, 0. And this will be the second row, 0, 0, 1. Okay. Let us simplify. You are familiar with how to solve the uh, determinant, how to find the value of determinant. I, product of this 2, minus 1. Okay. Minus, actually we should write minus, but 0 into 0, 0. No need to worry. Minus j. The middle term always we write a minus sign. Okay, so what will happen now? 1 into 1, 1 and 0 into 0, 0 minus, sorry, there is plus k product of this 2, 0, product of this 2 is also 0. So in a simple language, we can say we have got minus 1, minus 1 and 0. So this is a cross product. After that, we want its norm, right? But uh, we don't have much space here. Make a screenshot of it first, then I will go further. So purposely I kept few things on a board so we can use them. So after that we have to find its norm. Let us do norm 5x cross 5z. So you know how to find value of norm. Square root of, square of first, square of minus 1 is 1. Square of second component which is 1. Square of third component 0. So it will be root 2. Okay. So after that, what we want, we want f of phi of x1, xz, right? So now, now f of phi of xz, right? So this is equal to f of phi of xz. I have uh, written here what we have x1 minus x and z. So after that, we have to follow the definition of f to find its value. So definition of f says simply we have to add all components. So we will have the value of function. So I will do the same. I'm going to add all components. But what will happen x and minus x will get cancelled and simply we will have it is 1 plus z. So let us follow the definition now. Then double integration of f over s. Let me write a definition first over d. But see we have a limit here. So let me write directly 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. f of phi of xz okay norm 5x cross 5z and dz dx or dx dz doesn't matter so this is 0 to 1 0 to 1 f of phi of xz what is it uh, we have got its value right yes it is 1 plus z 1 plus z what is value of this norm it is root 2 root 2 dz dx so that root 2 is a constant will come outside the integration, okay? Root 2 is a constant, 0 to 1. So now simply we have to integrate that 1 plus z with respect to this z. What will be integration? Integration of 1 is z, integration of z is z square by 2 with limit 0 to 1 dx. After that, I'm going to put upper limit, lower limit, okay? So uh, we have some space here. I hope the problem will be over. Uh, that space will be enough to complete this problem, okay? So, root 2, okay? So, so, I'm putting the upper limit, lower limit, 0 to 1. If you put 1, 1 plus 1 by 2. And if you put 0, we will have 0. No need to worry. dx. So, we need to cross multiply. It will be 3 by 2. Again, constant, we can take it outside. So, 3 root 2 by 2. So only dx is left there. So integration of dx is x. Let me write here x 0 to 1. So if you put 1, if you put 0, we will have simply 1. Value of this bracket will be 1. So the answer is 3 root 2 by 2. So this is a required answer. Uh, make a screenshot of it. After that, we will stop. Thank you.